Hey, everybody. This is your dear friends, Daria and I. <laughs> We're bringing you another episode. And this time it is Keep Beach City Weird. So last week when I told Daria what the title was, she immediately groaned about Ronaldo. So do you have a prediction about what this episode is? Any thoughts on the Ronaldo wing we're about to see? <laughs> they could still be going to fake us out, but that mm-hmm. is the title of Ronaldo's <laughs> book. And hmm. yeah. I know, it's not that I don't like Ronaldo per se. It's just that when I thought about him so far, it's like, does he seem like the one who should be the focus of an episode? Yeah, why not more Onion, right? <laughs> See, I've liked Ronaldo when he sort of popped up and said something said a few weird things and popped down again. Now he's about to make the whole episode weird. (sighs) Are the crystal gems will always save the day? It's part of the great diamond authority! They'll take on any form! You can read all about it on my blog! (sighs) Oh, you were right. Ronaldo, uh, front and center. <laughs> let's see if we can't cover this. Are we? Oh, we actually open with Stephen in a panic, calling Pearl out to save him. She rushes to the balcony of the beach house to find that he is running from two little copies of himself who are the shapeshifter forms of Garnet and Amethyst into them coloured versions of Stephen. They're playing Stephen tag. As soon as someone tags you, you shapeshift into Stephen. However, Pearl refuses to play, and just, even though she's tagged, she does not shapeshift into a pearl-coloured Stephen. Stephen, I don't know, Stephen down from his game of Stephen Tag, goes for a walk along the beach and runs into Ronaldo, or a restricted area set up by Ronaldo, because Ronaldo thinks he has found another weird thing for his Beach, beach City weird blog. And those of us, especially those of us who edited the relevant episode not long ago, know that the, <laughs> what he's found is just the holes in the rocks left over from fighting some parasites. However, he is determined that he's onto something bigger and there is a pattern forming. Stephen is intrigued by this because he hasn't made the connection back to himself and the gems yet. And Ronaldo takes him into town to show him the exhibits of weirdness, like a bit of rock crash into the ground and non-native, not to this dimension flowers scattered all over the big donut dumpster. We know these are from previous gem incidents. Stephen doesn't make a connection. Of course, Ronaldo doesn't know at all. At his lighthouse headquarters, he apparently has a space up in the lighthouse we've seen a couple of times before. He has the obligatory board full of clippings, and he says it's all down to the actions of snake people or sneeple who are secretly running everything and pitting mammals against each other with wars and elections and anime message boards. <laughs> Stephen is completely wild about this and rushes back to tell the other gems and they explain what long-time viewers know along that this is just the leftovers from their various adventures. Stephen asks, does this mean the weirdness in Beach City? The Keep Beach City Weird of the blog title is down to them and Pearl is just like, well, yeah, it's obvious, isn't it? (laughs) Stephen, a bit dejected, goes to tell Ronaldo, who is soon in entirely dejected he is taking a cast from a indentation on the beach which we saw earlier was where a stephen shaped amethyst landed which means as soon as he brings up this cast it is of stephen's face and he is forced to admit that maybe this weirdness is down to stephen and his friends and this just breaks him entirely he says he's not doing the blog anymore he updates the blog to the effect after a Headline saying, can science explain this big potato? And (laughs) in the picture, the potato isn't even that big. So science probably would have a little trouble. Stephen sees this and is actually kind of upset at shattering Ronaldo's life like this. He decides that the best thing to do is to re-inject the weirdness into Ronaldo's life. And while Ronaldo is sitting all dejected in the lighthouse, Stephen bursts in disguised, not excessively well but enough for Ronaldo and Petey as a snake person as a snurson <laughs> oh in fact no that happened that happens at the back of the fry shop he is then knocked out by a potato and then taken to the lighthouse excuse me where shining a pen torch in his eye Ronaldo realizes is the waveform expected of a multi-dimensional being 
doesn't notice the fabric nature of the snake person or that it has perfectly human eyes or human flesh-colored parts around its eyes and mouth. Stephen can't speak because Ronaldo put tape over the gap in the costume for the mouth, so Stephen is super dedicated to the bit. And then the other three gems burst in, apparently knowing that Stephen has been kidnapped by Ronaldo with Petey there to watch, and they try to battle. Ronaldo has some attempted armor under his shirt, which does him no good as the the gems could probably defeat him even if they were just the humans they look like at this point. Mm-hmm. Pearl just kind of puts an arm out and he hurts his hand trying to punch her. It's all a bit <laughs> sad for him. Stephen wriggles out of his costume and prevents the fight. Ronaldo is disappointed again that it's all just down to Stephen and Stephen tries to persuade her otherwise, but Petey manages to pick up literal bits of paper and also bits of the story to say that maybe this is actually the secret plot by Level 8 Beings. And Ronaldo says, get real, Petey. Level 8 Beings could never organise to this extent. (laughs) He throws down the papers that Petey tries to hand him and realises, why did he never see this before? That, in fact, the source of all the weirdness is polymorphic sentient rocks which he more or less accuses the gems of being, funnily enough, (laughs) with their humanoid forms and they're part of a great plot and he needs to write it all up on his blog and he credits them not to the Sneeple but to the Great Diamond Authority as the others leave him calling about his blog from the deck of the lighthouse and we go to credits. (laughs) I think I covered it. There's a lot of back and forth as to who thinks what when in this episode, but I think that's about the size of it. Accurate representation of what we just watched to me. This episode, we full on turn Ronaldo into a parody of conspiracy theorist bloggers, which he kind of was before, but Mm -hmm. now he's in depth into its door connected and yes. Goodness knows what he's doing with his blog if he's still got it in 2020 and running through the C19 outbreak. So, because mm-hmm. a lot of us right here and now have encountered a lot in the form of conspiracy theories about that. So, this is ringing quite true when we happen to watch it. I'm yet to hear any of the virus credited to Sneeple, however. Mm hmm. Well, what about the lizard people? I have heard of the lizard people, the reptiloids, who are apparently yeah. different from the reptilians. So. Uh. Hiding among us, yeah. running our governments. Yeah. I, mm. I had to research that for someone once just to make sense what was going on. And it's like, my goodness, how deep does this go? And by deep, I mean really shallow. Yeah. But so, um, Ronaldo just isn't himself unless he's finding clues and a conspiracy movement. He says he's on the search for the truth. And when he literally finds it out and finds an actual source of supernatural things, which are quite literally supernatural things, there are magic and space and what have you going on in Beach City. But he needs the fragments. He needs to be putting together a truth of his own design. He can't just learn it and find the explanation for everything. Even at the end, yeah, (laughs) he helps him by sort of giving him fragments of the actual truth for him to put together. I mean, he goes, he doesn't like the idea that it's the gems, but is quite happy to make up the idea of polymorphic sapient rock people, which is pretty much the gems. Right, they take on any form. <laughs> it's like we just saw that at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. I, I find that hilarious as well, that he is always looking for supernatural phenomena, but he seems disappointed that the, it's just these extraterrestrials who are his neighbors. <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. why, why isn't that, why isn't that weird enough for your blog? Yeah, well, he gives it away a little when he says that it's finally something important happening to him that he, do, he yeah. doesn't want to just know the truth. He wants the truth to be uncovered by him as an achievement. That's true. And given some of the stuff I've read on you know his written by crew people blog he does seem to take things that are happening and not only does he get them wrong in a really funny way he makes them about himself i guess that's what he needs to make it seem likely to him is that somebody is targeting him or he is leading some kind of charge to uncover something 
I mean, this is proper speculation, but during the episode, we saw Stephen avoid a common or garden snake, which where I live, that's actually a very wise thing to do. But he freaks out because at this point, he is right in the myth of the snake people. Mm-hmm. If Ronaldo saw that snake, he'd probably think the snake is just going past to lull me in self sense security, but they are keeping me under surveillance because they know I might get close to the truth. Yes. This is a very common thing amongst conspiracy bloggers that there is a all-powerful network of people who can arrange disappearances and national upheavals and changes of government, but for some reason not shutting down little bloggers and video makers who supposedly have stumbled across their plan. Yeah. <laughs> so these people who go, oh, we can change the president of the United States, is, but this guy is back room in Idaho. Can't do nothing about that. We'll, we'll just need to sneakily infiltrate his anime message board and make sure that they can't talk about anything important because we'll set them fighting over subs versus dubs. Well, he's right in that. Subs versus dubs can get quite a vicious fight. <laughs> yeah, I have seen that. Yeah. I used to go to an anime club for many years. Same. So. Mm. See, I, I was a subs person because I had one foot in Japanese culture already thanks to family and experiences. So I wanted the subs so I could better hear and learn Japanese. Right. Yeah. We, we pretty much watched only subtitled anime as well. But that was largely because a lot of the stuff that was dubbed was stuff everybody had seen, you know? So I don't know. Hmm. We're going to become Ronaldo here and start talking about anime. <laughs> you know, back, back to the, I don't know, <laughs> not subbed, dubbed into English because it's made in English, Steven Universe. <laughs> yeah. What if there had been parts of it that had subtitles? <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah, I'm not sure in this house of gems know that Stephen has been kidnapped and to come to the, well, I suppose they, he might have mentioned the lighthouse earlier. I have a theory about that, actually. I was at first kind of troubled by the fact that they left him on an island for at least a week in the previous episode and nobody (laughs) came looking for him. But then the same day they're crashing through the wall. Where's our Steven? But I noticed upon, you know, other rewatches that Steven says, I'm going to go fix Ronaldo, be back in an hour. And then he wasn't. So they must've known something happened to him. I don't know how they knew it was the lighthouse, but they, you know, probably the same way that they figure out what their missions are. (laughs) The lighthouse, I can at least go so, somewhere between cuts and babbling, Stephen said. And Renato's got a thing in the lighthouse and he's got all the pieces of paper and it shows everything. I don't remember him mentioning specifically the lighthouse, but it's possible that they know he hides out there because it's right on top of their uh, statue, that lighthouse. And so they've probably seen him going in and out and they did just discuss Ronaldo. So chances are they put two and two together. They can be pretty smart sometimes inside of being really dumb sometimes. <laughs> I also figured there was a small time jump in there in which Stephen could have mentioned any number of things. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, that that's also possible. But, you know, I definitely think they wouldn't have found it suspicious that he was gone if he hadn't said, I'll be back in an hour. Good point. Good point. I haven't actually seen a lot of people like talking about that. That's just that might be one of my unique contributions to this fandom in this episode. No one cares about <laughs> I also just had a thought that, I mean, they know who Ronaldo is. They know about the blog, that's for sure. Yeah. It could could be that Ronaldo has published a piece on his blog about his super secret undetectable headquarters, which is a photograph of the lighthouse. Yeah, he did actually blog about the lighthouse. I might might want to ramble, ramble about the blog at some point later after we talk about the episode, but I I believe there were specifically when he noticed the fence go up around that cliff, which puts, I guess it it enclosed the lighthouse, that cliff went up in episode 24. So he was kind of freaking out about it. Like, why is this here? Who's trying to hide something? And then he's just like, I'll just lock the lighthouse. (laughs) Yeah. So there we go. This week, Pearl Amethyst who said, he said it's going to Ronaldo. Oh, Ronaldo's blog is still open on his phone. Some, some, some. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> there we go. We, sol- we solved the mystery much, much, much less elaborately than Ronaldo did. I have another funny thing that I, when I talked about it on the internet, I was the first to uncover the truth. His snake men costume. You remember actually in that 
in that same episode in an in indirect kiss when the fence went up was also when he was struggling to cry and Pearl was like, just, just today you were crying about snakes. <laughs> and he goes, they don't have any arms. I noticed that his snake costume had arms. <laughs> <laughs> As Ronaldo comments on it, he goes, arms appear to be vestigial. <laughs> I'm like, he put arms on his snake costume because he wants snakes to have arms. That feels so bad cute. for them. That's 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 so Steven. I just found it hilarious that he couldn't talk because Ronaldo taped up the mouse hole, not his mouth, just the hole where his mouth would go. I was, yeah, I have complained about that like a cartoon nerd before. I'm like, why couldn't he... What, I mean, what, was he trying to escape or was he just didn't want them to find out it was him? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, he should have been able to talk. <laughs> well, I, I took it for the Stephen-esque dedication to the bit. Yeah. That, even though afterwards he slid out of the costume, but that was to stop people from fighting. <laughs> yeah. His, I don't like people fighting if it's not necessary trait is definitely something that's becoming stronger and definitely yeah. something his mother would approve of, I think. I think so too. I wonder what his deal was, what Ronaldo's deal was with his armor under his clothes. And I I liked when they, when they were fighting, you could see, even though Pearl looks really spindly and uh, fragile next to the other gems, it's like all she does is hold up her hand and he punches her hand and he he clearly is no match for her. So it's it's like, they're really highlighting the difference between (laughs) the humans and gems in this scene. But then he stands back and says like, he's going to do his special attack and it's psychic ghost powers activate. And he starts chanting and I'm like, what, what was he trying to do? Like, what was he going to unleash? (laughs) He's probably been assured that he has this technique for the psychic ghost powers, but he's never actually been in any kind of fight before. So he's never had a chance to find out. Well, he got his butt kicked by the purple Puma. (laughs) Yeah, indeed. (laughs) This this is the other thing. I I took that I took the result of that fight to be as as much the difference between Jem and human as the difference between <laughs> Ronaldo and anyone else. Uh, yeah, mm. I'm feeling even if Pearl really was just a human of the size she appears to be, she probably could have taken him. It is possible, especially since she has those very quick reflexes. But he was able to knock Stephen out with a potato. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's a scientifically unexplainable potato. Right. <laughs> I think the I think the issue might have been that it looked like his head. It was like shaped sort of like his head. Can science explain it? I noticed a bit of that too. <laughs> but either way, the science is, yeah, the potato is a bit big and it's funny shaped. So funny. So it's probably a riff on the people seeing various deities in the burn patterns on their toast or their alphabet soup or whatever. <laughs> Or their pancakes. <laughs> I've definitely seen a lot of that. And people trying to sell them on eBay. Oh, yeah. I remember a, sh- I remember a case of that, that just went international because it just got so much bids some years ago. Yeah. And it's just, it's perishable food. Like, what are you going to do with it if you get it? Like, I mean, could you, even if you could like vacuum seal it or something, I mean, I, I don't. By the time it gets to you and trying to, I don't know, post a cornflake or whatever. So weird. Mm. But I imagine Ronaldo's probably got all kinds of food related resemblances in his blog. <laughs> at least he certainly does look at a lot of potatoes. So odds are good that he would eventually come across one that looked like him. Yeah, the, I liked the episode more than I thought because there are a lot of funny bits. It didn't warm me to 10 solid minutes of Ronaldo as a concept, but no. Lots of little bits like Stephen Tag and yes, some of Ronaldo. That was my favorite. <laughs> more elaborate theory. So I think if they revisit him again, they would have to sort of extend him beyond this one one note because I don't know if they tried to do another 10 minutes of Ronaldo thinks he's found the truth, but he really hasn't. Yeah. Well, at least at this point, we've gotten him pretty well established for what he's about and that he doesn't really want to work in the at the at the fry shop. He's focused on his weirdness and believes he's on to big and better things. Yep. So though PD with his shift in responsibility seems more content with his lot after his stint as Freiburg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he's got some, he's being trusted with responsibility now and he can work the deep fryer and, and probably uh, and feels good I, about it. 
Fosbol, insofar as the fry shop has such things, he appears to outrank his older brother. <laughs> yeah. Really, is there this kind of ass- assuming Ronaldo's older because he's larger and more or less adult size? Yeah, he is older. He, he'd kind of have to. He'd kind of have to be. They're not really much. You can be much younger than Petey and actually be a capable person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. Fryman called him his older brother once in the show. So. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we do have explicit confirmation. But interestingly, the guy who plays Petey is, you know, has has a disorder where he doesn't grow and he stays small. So, I mean, if Petey had that, <laughs> he wouldn't. <laughs> it would be a legit way for him to be small. Yeah, oh, there you go. I, yeah, I, I I am always taken by the Fryman family's fry shaped hair too. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Ha- they have not showed if their mother shared that trait. So. We just we just have to assume either they both take after their dad or his mom had it too. <laughs> well, that might be what attracted Fryman Senior to Mrs. Fryman. <laughs> he was ca- caught the eye. Uh, his eye was caught by this woman with f- fries for hair. <laughs> you want your last name to be Fryman? <laughs> I can help you with that. I think that's that's uh, part part of Ronaldo's frustration. He, he can't escape this fry legacy because his hair just grows like that no matter what he does. That's why he's got to try so hard. Didn't Amethyst call him curly in this episode? Yep. Curly <laughs> fries. Curly. Yeah. So you got the little little wavy hair flop fries for Petey and the curlier fries for Ronaldo, and then the dad has these straight up fries <laughs> <laughs> sticking out of his head. <laughs> It looks like it's part of the cap, but it isn't. Yeah, that's what I thought it's first and all. No, oh, me too. It looks like one of those, like a, a embarrassing uniform or something. And you know, in cartoon logic, you can't tell when somebody's hair is bright yellow. You can't tell if it's blonde or if it's, you know, a prop that's yellow. Well, it's like Bart Simpson's hair is just. If you look at it, supposedly he's blonde, but his hair just continues straight up from his head. Yep, he just looks like he has a pointy head. Same with his sisters. Yeah. Very I've weird. Seen, I've seen some, weird quite design. Fri- some quite frightening art renderings based on that. Too. Yes. <laughs> mm. So what else did you like? Oh, the Stephen Tag forms were adorable. Especially yes. Garnet still has her shades as she's Stephen. That, that was so amazing to me. It just opening the episode, obviously the opening was my favorite part. And she's taking it very seriously because she's Garnet. And it was just, it was such a joy to see Garnet like that. I mean, we've seen Amethyst do Steven, like this is like the third time we've seen Amethyst mm. Steven impression, but Garnet, like it's just, it's just so it's, it's, you would never have thought, okay, we're going to open an episode and it's going to have Garnet shapeshifted to Steven for some reason. Like, mm. <laughs> and, and then Garnet, there it is. And Garnet playing this frivolous game of, Stephen Tag. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, like, I wonder how that began. Like, is it just Amethyst tagged her and somebody told her the rules and she just said, well, I mean, if it's the rules, I have to. The whole game started if, if Stephen tagged Amethyst and she shaped shifted into him and they went, okay, this is what you do now. <laughs> yeah. And yet again, we have an example of Pearl not participating in the shape shifting. Yeah. That, for those of us resting on the Pearl never shape shifts thing, this was definitely fodder for it. Yeah, of course. I'm sure she's playing it off like, oh, I just can't be bothered to be so childish. Yeah, she, yeah, she doesn't seem much, as much of a tag player anyway, but still. Yeah, Garnet takes everything really seriously. Like if you've seen her play several different kinds of games, she is competitive. Well, we saw her playing Meat Beat Mania and yeah. good heavens, how deep she go on that. Right, and the two games before that, she's punching stuff and then she's like, I won. <laughs> <laughs> she wants everybody to know she won and uh no oh, there's been there's been a couple of things like in the first episode she's like this was my idea <laughs> and in yeah it was uh the roses room episode when they brought back the whaling stone and they're like look at the check out the whaling stone we found she goes the whaling stone i found <laughs> <laughs> she's like she wants credit for everything she does perfectly <laughs> but she's just stating facts <laughs> yeah. i like that so you do run out, as they say, you do run out of players on Stephen Tag pretty quickly because there's only three people that can shape shift or potentially shape shift. Right. Like, how's the game end? <laughs> yeah. It's just... Oh, we're all Stephen now. 
This, is this how that maybe this is how they could, they could have pacified Lapis by asking you to join a game of Stephen Tag so she can become a Stephen as well? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm trying to picture that Lapis Stephen. <laughs> Big old wings. <laughs> well, if one had little touches of that they still made them themselves, even though they were Stevens. I mean, Carla yeah. had the shades and Amethyst was still moving and batting her eyes like Amethyst. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that her Steven form had cute little eyelashes and she doesn't have those when she's in her normal form. No, I guess she was just trying to mess with Pearl. <laughs> Maybe. Wouldn't be surprised. That's half of what goes on in the real estate of her brain is dedicated to how to mess with Pearl. Speaking of speaking of eyes, sort of, we got we got a brief moment of really anime eyes on Ronaldo when he was yeah. when he turns around. Yes, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. You had a reaction to that part. You're like, oh, <laughs> yes, <maybe>. unexpected. <laughs> yeah, and he, he was so eager. Maybe think Stephen has some more had some more fodder for his theory and thought he had too much. Based on this episode, people had Snapple theories for years and years. <laughs> you know, because Ronaldo is kind of built like, I mean, based on what he said at the end, it's like he's one of those broken clocks who's right twice a day. So yeah. people were, you know, they're waiting for something that could be interpreted as Snapple to be real. <laughs> what if it's Snapple? <laughs> And you can't say that without kind of saying it tongue in cheek, but at the same time, I mean, uh, yeah, maybe the, like the very last episode, the post credits is a bunch of <laughs> actual sneak just looking at the whole thing and sort of going, oh. mm. <laughs> yeah, yep. And it it was all the sneeple just watching the show. Um, so his uh, conspiracies partly incorporated his opinions of their money so we got to see what their money looked like and it it says united states on it so they're in america but it's different mo- than our money so it's just similar in a couple of weird ways <laughs> yeah i don't have in my head too closely what american money usually looks like for the obvious reason i don't spend it very often yeah but i recognize a few differences yeah oh sure yeah, it's funny because there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding, like, is it the Illuminati? Uh, you know, references on the dollars. Oh, yeah, I've certainly seen the pyramid and what have you. So it's uh, it's very similar to real conspiracy theories that he's sitting there analyzing the money and seeing a upside down, like a diamond on there saying it's, it, it's maybe it symbolizes their sharp teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and this, the snake reminding me of the don't tread on me snake. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, I know that I know it has a proper name and I know some people hold a lot of store in it, but unfortunately this foreigner only knows it as the don't tread on me snake. <laughs> uh, I've never sat down and compared Stephen's world's money to ours, but it looks enough like ours that it's clearly derived from some of the same things. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe he's partly right. Maybe gems messing around the time that some kind of influence that someone did decide to put a big upside down diamond on it. Mm-hmm. He said that they want to hollow out the earth. <laughs> yeah, that that at least we haven't seen. The closest we saw has <laughs> been Amethyst making a few holes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least so far, there's no indication that they have any designs on hollowing out the earth. But definitely at this point, there's people trying to figure out, well, maybe that's right. And which parts of it are Ronaldo being crazy and which parts of it are, you know. Yeah, what, whatever he is, <laughs> how halfway there is he with the hollowing of the earth by polymorphic rocks on behalf of the great diamond authority. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave you to incorporate that into any Sneeple theories you might be developing at this point. <laughs> but you know kind of speaking of his delusions though this was kind of a it was a little bit of a controversial episode for some people because of how they handled the ending like that you know pd tried to get him pd and steven both tried to get him to go back to believing 
crazy stuff because he's happier that way. And some people criticized it saying like, oh, well, are you trying to say that, you know, if you have somebody who believes a lot of delusions or is mentally ill or something that the way you should deal with that is to encourage the unreality and encourage that. I heard one of the responses from, from the crew people basically saying, well, we're not sitting here dictating lessons to you. We're not saying this is how you should handle this. If you know a person like this, we're, we're showing you that this is a thing that happened. (laughs) This is something that this character did because they perceived that they were helping this other character and they don't want you to get it mixed up with like, Oh, we're teaching you that this is, it's better to just pat people on the head and let them rave. Yeah. And in this case, what they were doing was putting things back as they were, because when they shattered his illusions, they shattered him right down to the core. Right. I mean, there were some people who were saying maybe that's what he needed. And then he would start actually looking at what truth is, but on the other hand, he, you know, when confronted with truth, his reaction was, I don't want to accept this because it means I'm not important. <laughs> It'd probably be better if he wasn't in the grip of such delusions. Yeah. But there are better ways to get him out of them. Mm-hmm. And as noted, the two who were doing that, children, and they're not psychiatrists. And Right. Yeah, exactly. And Stephen sometimes just isn't very bright, period. So... Right. I mean, his idea of how to fix Ronaldo was to dress up in a shoddy Sneeple costume and, you know, come try to prove that snake men are puppeting the government. (laughs) Yeah, which that Ronaldo believed that right away suggests that there is actually some deep set issues going on of what Ronaldo will and won't believe. Yeah. Yeah. All you need is somebody to walk up and say, by the way, snake men are real. And he doesn't think, oh, a 10-year-old boy in a shoddy outfit. Exactly. Mm. So he probably needs way more help than Edie and Stephen could ever give him. More than likely. And, you know, he's got all these other things going on. Like he's walking around with some kind of, I don't know what that device was, but he says there was a quantum flux on the weirdometer. It's like, where are you getting your toys, Ronaldo? Who are you listening to? Yeah, that yeah, that reminds me because of, of, you know, when you see these adverts or begging for money for supposed quantum detectors or alpha wave inhibitors and things. And there's a disclaimer saying, oh, it may not work as we describe here because of particularly dense forms of uh, insubstantial particle matter in your area. Yep. Convenient. They come with their own disclaimer. And I I think it's fairly safe to say what Ronaldo had was just a, a, a little plastic ball that wanders into various color patterns on his thing and probably this went into went into the relevant part because he stepped on a crack or something <laughs> because yeah. the whole stopped clock thing he's probably just just lucky he happened to be doing that right next to where the bits of rock were stuck into the ground and in fact as this episode points to that's most of beach city has something in it so that's right Chances are where, where, wherever that happened, he would have been able to find something to ascribe. And in fact, even if there wasn't anything gem related, at this point, he's so determined on his steeple theory that he would have been able to link it up somehow. Yeah. Mm. I think with the exception of the red rocks, because I, I was feeling like those probably would have been cleaned up by now, especially little pieces like that. But the other two things, like the holes in the cliff and the, the obviously the flowers, it's like it was, re- it's really obvious to even pretty casual viewers like we've seen those before maybe not with the arcade mania ones the holes in the cliff if they didn't realize where they were but you know the red rocks just sitting there you know it could have been something else but you know given that all the other things were recognizable i was like i think you're wrong ronaldo they probably did fall from the sky and not grow up from the ground and even if you don't remember that episode who else is going to be dealing with chunks of shiny red rock Mm -hmm. mm-hmm yeah there's random pieces of gem stuff, like around gem related stuff sometimes. So I, I, and I don't know what that means. It's like, if you look around the bottom of the warp pad, there's kind of crystals and stuff, but I don't know. It's definitely something that, I don't know, you would think that he would start to want to investigate Steven and his family, not say, well, it can't just be you guys. You know, how come he doesn't say like, is Steven and these mysterious rock people are spying on me. They live right below where my office is. <laughs> so they traveled back in time to say they've been there thousands of years. <laughs> I guess that's his 
unconscious desire to seek rather than find the truth. See, not going to investigate the people that might actually have the answers, especially because the gems are not remotely secretive about what they do. It's true. He's always taking pictures of it and then recontextualizing them on his on his blog. <laughs> you want me to tell you about some of the stuff on the blog up to this point? Oh, go ahead. Sounds fun. I don't know exactly when they, I didn't look at the dates on it, but I remember when I went back to the beginning of it, you know, it's like he's posting on, he posts on Tumblr. It's Keep Beach City Weird on Tumblr. And it's, you know, first post is like just him uh, announcing that he's a seeker of the truth. And, you know, he has a lot of entries that clearly line up with episodes. And then some of them that just don't have anything to do with anything. Mm -hmm. They're just random weird stuff like the potato thing. Uh, can science explain the, the potato that looks like his head? So after he establishes that he's a truth seeker at the beginning of the blog, he I think the first one he wrote about was when the red eye blew up. And he said that it was because vampires were on the moon. And <laughs> <laughs> I think he had this conspiracy theory that they were sent there in the 60s. And now they were trying to come back and they were actually going to destroy him because he had figured this out. <laughs> So space vampires, and that was their eye. And he had a, a picture drawn of it of a mock-up of what he thought the whole vampire looked like. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so he called them Draculas. He was like, the Draculas were coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And the thing is, when you when you know Ronaldo, you can't help but read everything in his voice. So everything is like that yelling. <laughs> Yeah, and that sudden that sudden shift of tone from good yeah. Dracula's <laughs> Yeah. They do a good job like using capital letters and exclamation marks and stuff to really imitate the way he talks. There is let's see, I remember that he had some commentary on the Frybo incident, but I I know he wasn't there at the Frybo incident. He just he wasn't in the episode. So his blog said that he had been trying to sell, he had tried to pit, trying to pitch it like a mystery TV show and he was away mailing the DVD and when he got back the fry shop was wrecked and his family was crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, that's terrible. He had, let's see, so there was the fry shop and then let's see, right after Frybo was cat fingers and so he just has the picture of the cat fingers. <laughs> On his blog, it's like Stevens fingers. What? <laughs> so high res picture of that. He uh, he had one early on. I believe it was before he did the wrestling. He had an early on one about how he believed he, he was studying to learn how to astrally project himself. Oh, <laughs> and that he succeeded, and he was so happy because he was walking around invisible, and no one was paying attention to him. And even in normal life, people generally don't pay attention to him, but this was a whole different level of people not paying attention to him. And uh, then he was like laying down on the floor in the shop. And then when he woke up, his brother was screaming about gas fumes and that the dad was passed out too. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I successfully astral projected. <laughs> Good job, Ronaldo. But then when he got to Tiger Millionaire, the, the, he posts this like pre, pre-wrestling pre selfie where he's just like, I'm the Loch Ness Blogster. You know, they have me facing off against some some new heel from the company, <laughs> but uh, I'm not worried about it because wrestling is fake. <laughs> Next post is him looking all beat up and he's like, wrestling is real. <laughs> It's really funny. The next episode was Steven's Lion. And I remember the the accompanying Ronaldo blog about that was because uh, he was in the, at the pizza shop when he came mm. in and he was he was very angry that he had been tricked about this invisible pink lion. <laughs> but he still believed Steven might be having a baby. <laughs> Because he said he was ordering for two. What's interesting is that since the blog is associated with the real people who work on the show, sometimes there's like, there's on model art on there that wasn't in the show. Ooh, and cool. this was one of the entries where they, they had a picture of, of Steven uh, sitting on, just sitting on the ground outside of the pizza shop, eating the pizza that Lion had, Lion had left. So Lion wasn't going to share the extra fishy pizza with him. <laughs> and uh, Ronaldo took a picture of Steven sitting there stewing and eating the pizza and he labeled it Stephen was hate eating the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> and that picture was useful because then I used that to figure out what the pizza should look like when I, ah. when I made my own pizza for fish stew pizza. Have a purpose. Yeah. 
it all has a purpose. For a while there, they were posting something to try to make Ronaldo peripheral or relevant somehow of like almost every episode in between. He got mad when the video games were destroyed in episode 11. He was very angry that Teams of Rage had been destroyed by Garnet's punch. And he's just like, not to be dramatic, but my life is over. Because <laughs> he loved that game. It's so funny. <laughs> I really like that. But I don't think he said anything about Giant Woman because he wasn't around. There was nothing that happened in Beach City. What else? So I don't remember if he said anything about, you know what? I don't think he said anything on the blog about the next episode where Steven was aging, but there was something in this in this episode we just watched where there was a newspaper clipping about world's mo- oldest man or something like that. <laughs> he clearly thought was relevant and clipped out and put on that bulletin board full of conspiracy stuff. <laughs> yeah, one of his bulletin board pictures looked like Leonard Nimoy. Oh, yeah. I remember that. There's a few things I didn't know what they were and a few things that were like, oh, if you're a conspiracy theorist, of course you have a picture of Big, Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster or whatever. Um, somewhere in there, he, Ronaldo had a, another random unrelated entry about how he's searching around trying to find a carny graveyard because you can't, if you worked at the circus, you can't be buried with regular people. And so he has evidence that there's a carny graveyard somewhere in Beach City, and he's trying to ask Mr. Smiley where it might be. Oh, and he had some anecdote about how clowns can be buried all squeezed into one coffin. <laughs> so it's so messed up. Um, but he's asking around and trying to like bother Mr. Smiley into giving him information about. Carney graveyard. And he says that Mr. Smiley looked at him like, what's wrong with you? And why do you think I should know where a bunch of dead clowns are buried? <laughs> I'm like, I can just see Mr. Smiley's face, but I, I can't line that up with anything that happened in the show. It does sound like the sort of thing that people just pick up on and believe that because <laughs> of some obscure thing, circus employees can't be ba- buried with everyone else. <laughs> And then they so add a, add an extra touch by going so far as to say, all the clowns are stuffed into one coffin. <laughs> Squeezed into one coffin. The clown coffin. <laughs> Such a random idea. Like the carny grave. <laughs> Just, so he has to ask the only person who works at a carnival that he knows. It vaguely um, reminds me of the no deaths at Disneyland myth. Oh, and what I is that? There is an urban legend, which I believe has been debunked many times that if someone is in some kind of, because of illness or accident or whatever, dies at a Disney park, that Disney, being an all-powerful corporation that can do anything as in these stories, has an arrangement that the death is not, the time of death is not declared until the body has been moved out of the park grounds. So Wow. And that's supposedly so they can say that no one has ever died at Disneyland or Disney World or Disney, whichever is nearby. Wow. And it's very quickly debunked by there are stories of people who have, in fact, died at Disneyland because it's a big park that's been around for many years and sometimes, sadly, things do happen, even if they're just heart attacks, which Disney cannot do anything about. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a very pervasive, it's a very pervasive myth that just reminded me of that would see some obscure thing about entertain entertainment and and death Mm -hmm. that he'd found right there sounds like the kind of thing that ronaldo would believe and perpetuate (laughs) yeah so i'm wondering if they thought of the disney thing thought oh no we we can't go so far as to say say that no nothing because disney will come along and kick our butts but Mm -hmm. they sort of saw how many steps further they could take it before it Turn into something they could use and something could get even more like a Ronaldo theory. <laughs> yeah. I think that he posted this one in between the one where Stephen got old in number 13 and then number 14, which was when Stephen went on that trip with Lars and the cool kids and released all those flowers. And Ronaldo's reaction to it was that he was super allergic to whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's mysterious flowers and I'm super allergic to them. <laughs> So he Probably brings it right back to being about him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He had an interesting reaction to the flood of toys from when Onion made all those Dave guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, of course, that's the kind of thing that you probably see happening if you're working on the boardwalk or investigating with your weirdometer or something. You probably see the flood of Dave guys coming forth. So 
he pointed out that these toys were falling from the sky. And I think he was trying to pitch his own toys. Like he's like, oh, these toys are are crappy. They're you know, if little kids play with these, but men men play because they're called guys. And he's like, men play with boys, b o y s. And it's like these pewter figurines he came up with that are way better than <laughs> maybe some truths are just too scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he might just be afraid to, you know, step on the toes of anybody else in town who has a food name. Mm. <laughs> Maybe he just looked at Onion and said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll, it, I'll interfere with the Crystal Gems. I'm not afraid of them, but I'm afraid of him." Mm, too rich for my blood. One of my favorite ones was that he wrote something on his blog about the Lion Two, the movie incident that he tried to go see Dogcopter and he didn't like it. So he wrote about how much he hated it and that he was going to see it three more times to make sure he hated it. How familiar <laughs> thing. And that, that is something that a lot of people that are kind of, I don't know, like that online do is they hate watch things. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to be a conspiracy theorist or an online jerk to do that, but you know. Yeah, but it sounds like he's also overlapping up with a bit of toxic nerddom as well yeah, as conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. And I'm right. sure there's overlaps of that in real life and all. Yeah. One of my favorite things about him writing about that is that he saw the movie, he disliked it intensely, and then he said that when he came out, he advised his readers not to go to that theater because the parking lot was all messed up, which, you know, <laughs> was because Stephen and Connie were fighting the thing. robot. Yeah. <laughs> the robot shooty thing there. And he's like, I, I can only assume that rioting dog copter fans messed it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> everybody must have hated it because I hated it. <laughs> it's just, it's really funny to me. And he sees a mess and he's like, that must be what happened that everyone hated it so much. They rioted. <laughs> it's really funny. Let's see what's next after 17, 18 was beach party. What did he say about beach party? Oh yeah. He commented on the fry shop. I mean, the pizza shop having a big dent in it, and he had a theory about what caused it. What was his theory? It was something ridiculous. That was obviously where where, where Garnet flew into it. Mm. I don't know how long it was busted like that, but if he actually witnessed it, he must not have actually witnessed it. Um, and formed his own explanation. Yeah. I think this is the one where he decided it was done by a type of dinosaur that was still around called the Pterodactyl. <laughs> Of course. That was in there somewhere if it wasn't this. Um, it was really messed up. He also, after that was the Rose's Room thing, and that was the one where at the end Stephen went to mini golf. Apparently, Ronaldo also went to mini golf. <laughs> and he had a uh, conspiracy theory is that one of the obstacles on the golf course that was shaped like a dinosaur was a real dinosaur that was preserved. And he was trying to, he was trying to get onto the golf course and like, reveal that this dinosaur was real. So he's trying to destroy this thing and he got banned from it. And he was very upset <laughs> because he was also banned from the attached shrimp buffet or something. <laughs> so he was not happy of, about getting banned from these places. He's probably a stranger to being banned from stuff. Right. You know, Lars has been banned from the video game store. So I don't know how many, and Steven's banned from, from Funland's rides. So people are always getting banned from stuff. He was briefly banned from the fish stew pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Number 20 was coach Steven. There wasn't like a, there, there was a picture, like he took a selfie that had Sugalite in the background for number 20. And he said that, I think there must've been a hiatus or something. Cause I was not part of the, the fandom at that point yet, but there was a long hiatus and, Ronaldo explained this by saying that he dropped his phone in the toilet and while he was trying to use his laptop to find resources on what to do, he dropped the laptop in the toilet. So he was not, he was not able to blog for all that time. And <laughs> so then he took a selfie on the beach and he's like, I'm back. And there's like in the background, you see Sugalite and it's like, there's some, there's a, something came out of the water and it was shaking the ground and I dropped my phone. So it's broken again. <laughs> Poor Ronaldo. <laughs> so close um, to learning something. and I know. The next episode was, uh, for 21, Joking Victim was, that one was a really interesting Ronaldo entry because he noticed, of course, the fire everywhere. And he said that Mayor Dewey said that it, it caused $600,000 in damage. 
So we get a comment on the, <laughs> the collateral damage that we're always seeing. What else did he say? Oh, he didn't know it was Lars that caused it. He just saw the fires. So he decided it was an arson ghost. <laughs> but of course. And it had a whole backstory. I forget what it was. There was some historical figure that like to set things on fire and there weren't that many buildings back when this ghost lived as a person. So he kept having to set his own house on fire. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> he had like the numbers and everything of how many times he set his own house on fire. It's a really interesting brand of humor and I would send you there if it wasn't full of spoilers. Let's see. He did have like an alternate realities thing for Steven and the Stevens, but he didn't mention seeing any of Steven's other Stevens. I don't think he would have. Mm -hmm. And Monster Buddies was next, and that was when he actually found one of the chips on the, on the beach, and he tried to eat it, but it had centipedal spit on it that was acidic, and he burned his mouth. Oh. So that was another one. Let's see, where was I? We're almost to the present now. <laughs> well, I, was I was wondering, did he have anything to say when the whole ocean disappeared? Yes. Let me see. Monster Buddies is 23. Indirect Kiss is 24. Did he say anything for indirect kiss? Because he wasn't part of that either. That was when he talked about the but fence. The fence, yeah. Hearing the fence. And then, yeah, he had pictures of the ocean being gone for 25. And then 26, he's like, the ocean's back. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had like art on there that was supposed to be a, a photo. What else did he say, though? He credited the ocean coming back to Stephen and his friends. So he knew that they had something to do with it. And it did seem to be public knowledge even in episode. Yeah. Because everybody like came and threw him in the air and did that whole hero's welcome thing. I think he had something in there where he had a bunch of theories as to what happened to the ocean. And that now that Stephen has succeeded, he said, I want to ask Stephen if any of my theories were right. And it, it was phrased really funny. It was something like, you know, I wanted him to tell me which one of my theories was right, because clearly one of them was. Oh, of course. Something like that. I don't know if anything happened for House Guest. I don't remember that. But he did witness the spacecraft from Space Race going into the sky. And he's just like, it's a UFO. Usually they come here from space. This one seems to be leaving to space. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it actually was. <laughs> it was a spaceship. So, hey, you know, he, he had some kind of theory about it. But I don't remember what it was. Let's see. Was there anything else funny before we get to like present i think oh i remember in for secret team number 29 he was ranting on his blog about being mad about the vi pizza policy <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was very mad because he usually just buys one slice and if only he had bought an entire pizza he would be qualifying for this free pizza card but since he only buys by the slice he's bought so much pizza and he can't get free pizza and he's just very angry it's one of those blog rants <laughs> which he calls a Ronaldo rant and it has a picture of him angry and everything. And I think right after that, he had the Ken science explain this potato. And then it had a, I'm, I'm shutting the blog down and it has like a tag. I'm nothing. <laughs> and then when it comes back, he has his polymorphic sentient rocks theory and the great diamond authority. He opened his box, like his ask box uh, on that. I think on that day, like after that, episode aired because probably a lot of new people were coming to see if the blog was real. And so he opened up the ask box and he got like 600 asks and he answered them in humorous ways. I seem to recall also that he answered a question in a way that referenced an episode that was like 10 from now. <laughs> Because, of course, they'd have already made them at the time. So, And he said that he thought maybe, that because somebody asked him, why do you think they want to hollow out the earth? And he says, I think they want to hollow out the earth to make it lighter so they can steal it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> they want to steal the planet Earth. Where they want to? Do, where they want to take that? One interesting piece of huh? The Daleks wanted to dig out the core and turn it into a warship. So oh, obviously, right. this is something that monsters do. I guess like space overlords are really into stealing Earth. I don't know why. But one factoid that they reference on Ronaldo's blog a couple of times. He mentions that they live in Delmarva which that's the first canon mention of that, you know, Beach City is the city, but Delmarva is the name of their state. It's a made up state. And in real life, there's an area of the United States that is referred to by some people as Delmarva because it's part of Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. VA is the postal abbreviation for Virginia. So Delmarva, it's like a peninsula and it kind of has a different culture from the mainland area. And it's part of three states, but that is apparently the name of Stephen's state is Delmarva. Delmarva. 
Yeah. So Ronaldo mentions going to Del Marbacan to get like cool anime weapons. And one of his asks mentions Del- living in Del Marva. So th- I, I think that's the first place that they canon wise like gave a name to the region, which is neat. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, I like it when they make up US states. I don't know why I have an attachment to this in, spe- this in particular, given mm-hmm. that cities and countries are made up all the time. But Yeah, that's true. I think, you know, as it goes along, there's a few other fun little pieces of trivia that they just throw out there to tell you names of places or repurposed places. <laughs> it's interesting that it's an alternate world. It's very much like our world, but it isn't our world. No, there's replacement state or extra state or something for a start and different different money. Mm-hmm. So, we haven't, should we, I give you... Huh? We haven't heard much of the, well, of most of the world outside of Beach City, other than Little mm-hmm. Gem destinations. So, we don't know yeah. what the United States as a whole or even Earth as a whole is, is like. Yeah, the places that they can teleport to using their teleporters, they're not being specific about like where in the world they are, whether they're close by, whether they're in the United States, whether they're elsewhere in the world. It seems like in at least in some cases, it seems like when they teleport back and forth, there's a difference between night and day or a difference between the temperatures. Yeah, And for ages, I thought they weren't even on Earth until we had... We had it pretty much underscored with this is the big teleporter you have to use if you want to go anywhere besides Earth. Therefore, anywhere right. we've been thus far has been Earth. Right. That that Pearl wouldn't have been sad about stuff not working at the galaxy. But yeah, they do have, I mean, we're only going to gem places that theoretically were built by or for extraterrestrials. So they do seem very unearthly, but they're apparently earthly. <laughs> You're right. Follow up questions. What do you think about a probing question? Oh, the mind probe. This is just maybe rambly opinion kind of thing, but we were talking earlier about how Ronaldo functions in the show and that he's kind of a full-on conspiracy theorist. I'm pretty sure that the way they present him, um, there aren't many people who find him likable. He's not supposed to be like, you like this character. He's basically everyone who sees him knows he's the type of thing that you sort of mock. And even though there are really people out there who are, who are like that to, you know, in their conspiracy theories, I don't think that they would really see themselves in Ronaldo. I think they wouldn't think they're like that. I don't think there's a lot of people who are like, this is my favorite character. I mean, there's a little pocket of people who are like, I, I like Ronaldo, but they sort of like him ironically. <laughs> You know? Well, they like him so, as an obnoxious character, not someone. Right, they exactly. Like yeah. So I, I was just like, my probing question is just like, do you kind of have any thoughts about like the purpose of including unlikable characters who are also not villains? I think I think that's the obvious. It shows a, a spectrum of actual characters mm-hmm. and does give you that depth because in, in in real life you meet people who some some people who are quite pleasant but ultimately you don't actually like and there are Mm -hmm. people who are deeply deeply unpleasant but you sometimes you don't mind them being around for a while so there's a Mm -hmm. bit of that not everyone's just going to be the same nice person thing I think part of making him a mockable thing is because he is so obnoxious in story as well so (laughs) Yeah, feel so bad of going. Oh no, there are people who really do believe things like this. I don't feel right not liking Ronaldo, but then Ronaldo is often just a complete jerk about it. And you think, well, even if, whether I agree with his theories or not, or I would in real life. You know, I don't like people who are jerk to everyone. So right, or kidnap people. children with a potato. Well, yeah. I've, I mean, I'm sure that might be an actual statute in Beach City specifically. But. <laughs> Love to ask Mayor Dewey. <laughs> uh, mm. But yeah, so I also think sometimes unlikable characters give uh, richness, if that's not an overly pompous term, to the mix of characters you're watching on your screen. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you don't want to see everyone just completely getting along and agreeing, and you want to throw someone in there who messes things up a bit or brings a conflicting point of view to, in the process, create some interesting dialogue or situations even if they're not a villain per se and Mm -hmm. sometimes even their their usually wrongness can come up with something that's 
a good thing to do or a good prompt for stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, so the, many- the whole mm-hmm. appeal of House MD is that this the star is someone you would not want to be near for more than a couple of minutes in real life, and that That's lasted true. eight seasons, and everyone loved it. So, yeah, I, I like House. Like with a couple exceptions of certain episodes where he, you know, whoever wrote it gave some misinformation about whatever the condition that they were talking about was. Oh, yeah. One of my um, friends is a doctor, and apparently that's just a thing that happens a lot. Oh, sure. I mean, in almost any medical mystery kind of show, I'll have something to say about that in the next episode. But there's, you know, like like you were saying, I think it does add some richness to, you know, the, the people of Beach City. Not everybody is somebody that you necessarily would want to hang out with. But I, I feel like there's so many people who actively disliked Ronaldo above and beyond even like villains of the show, you know, like they like those relationships or those episodes more than they would like another Ronaldo episode. They find him not only obnoxious, but not entertaining. And I still find him kind of entertaining. Like it's not like I hear that there's a Ronaldo episode and I'm like, Oh, I can't wait. But at the same time, it's like, I don't think I dislike his episodes as much as most people seem to. So I don't know. (laughs) He's sort of funny. (laughs) Maybe for some people it comes down to whether or not they know a quote-unquote Ronaldo in mm-hmm. real life. I definitely know people who believe every conspiracy theory going and they become quite painful to talk to. And sometimes mm-hmm. you see that on screen, you go, oh, it's, it's, it's that guy and now he's on my TV too. Yeah, and I think that is that that's an important observation because – the more I kind of think about people who are similar to him in certain ways, I think if I had just been wrestling with somebody like him in an internet argument, I would have very little tolerance for a Ronaldo episode compared to if it was otherwise, like mainly kind of two elements of, of Ronaldo remind me of people I've actually encountered mainly online. Number one is the completely unwarranted confidence that they're right about whatever it is. And it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether they're an expert or have ever read a book on it, but they know better than you. And, you know, they're usually some completely pompous, overconfident ass like him. Mm-hmm. And number two, that they believe that way about the truth, that they're going to, they know what the truth is, and now they have to walk back from the truth and find stuff to support it rather than the other way around. Yeah. And that's and so painful to have a conversation with a man like that. <laughs> when he said things like, you can't trust facts and books. And I was remembering yes. some catchphrase. <laughs> it's like, like Jenny McCarthy, who says, are they saying doctors know more than moms? It's like, uh, yes, yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> because doctors went to medical school for eight years and right. they learned things. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously going to be some aspects of familiarity with your kid and you know, willingness to do some research into something that maybe a doctor does know about, but spent half of a chapter on in medical school. I mean, it's true, but it doesn't mean that somebody that does not have a medical background is able to explore something from a medical perspective. So that's, you know, where you have to Oh, yes. Certainly Tell Jenny some, McCarthy to shut up. <laughs> certainly when it comes to some particular children and cases, there are things where yes. parents are knowing better than particular doctors, but she very much makes it oh, yeah. sound like a doctors are some, some arcane dabblers, whereas right. <laughs> her, her parental status gives her immense wisdom in and of itself. Right, and she just knows that you should not vaccinate. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway. But yeah, the, that particular catchphrase of hers just came to mind when he said, you can't trust facts. It's just he was much mm-hmm. more much more blatant about it. So you can probably take a guess how the Crooniverse, or at least the makers of this episode, feel about such things. Yes. I think he said something like that twice, something about can't trust facts or don't get hung up on these minor facts. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that in the... Lighthouse to hear something which completely floors your hypothesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just what they want you to think. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's the one who knows what eighth dimensional beings or eight level eight level beings or whatever, <laughs> what they can do. They're a worker society incapable of that level of organization or whatever. <laughs> Get real, Petey. 
<laughs> so funny. So we did not get any music in this one besides Steven singing a little thing about Steven Tag. <laughs> it's his name, but it's not his game. Yes. Maybe <laughs> my name and it just in my game. He does that a lot, doesn't he? Just wanders around singing little ditties. I'm thinking of the Postman song. One of my friend's kids used to do that. He's, he's sadly grown out of it now, but oh. everything had a, a musical summary. That's cute. It's like living in a musical. <laughs> and we also see Stephen being Stephen. He doesn't mind having lost Stephen Tag. It was fun to play. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really cute. I don't know all the names of like the little instrumental bits that happen behind everything, but I do recall that one of the ones that plays when Ronaldo is doing his thing is called Paranaldo Activity. There's some... It had to be an also ran for the episode title, I bet. <laughs> ah, oh, that would have been cool. Man, I know they had a separate one that played behind the interrogation he gave him when he was in the Snurson suit. And that one had some kind of dark music. I believe they had a recurrence of the Petey's Blues song. And other than that, I mean, it's all instrumentals. So but if that could be said to be Ronaldo's theme music, it's kind of x files <laughs> Yeah, I noticed uh, when he made his discovery that put him back on track of looking for weird things when, you know, during the get real PD scene. I noticed this thing behind it that was also a bit like a video game leveling up tune. Oh, mm -hmm. Reflecting his resumption of doing what he does, but his nerd status. Mm -hmm. I think that might've been the reprise of Paranaldo activity. I think that one, that's what it sounds like. I have a few of the instrumental tracks and when they come on, I'm like, that's gotta be the Ronaldo music. <laughs> and I know what you're talking about. <laughs> mm. And you know what? We didn't really have food either unless the potato counts. I don't count the potato. And some more fries, but that's just yeah. part of the course when you're dealing with characters that all work in a fry shop. Right. And Amethyst ate some potato chips. They, they weren't exotic new loaded fries or anything. <laughs> Pizza daughter yeah. was just getting a pack of fairly straightforward fries. Yeah. Amethyst eating a bag of potato chips or mm. if you want to call them crisps. <laughs> hmm. If only I had known that. I don't think I have too many factoids for you because most of them were the blog stuff. But if you wanted to know, this one is ordered by Raven and Paul again. They did the previous one and this one. I wonder. Hmm. They must, I mean, board them out of order and stuff. But hmm. yeah, well, so this is Raven and Paul. Yeah, a lot of shows shuffle their schedule as they go along. So yeah. They, this one didn't seem like it needed to necessarily be at any particular place. Like they could have played it before the episode we just saw or after the episode we just saw. Yeah, I think the, the, only, thing you, the only thing you really needed to know was who Ronaldo was and that was already mm -hmm. being drip fed few, to us earlier. So this one was mm -hmm. quite a movable feast. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's probably why it probably was not made in that order. I don't really know much about what order they made them in. I imagine it's a... Relief, well, maybe not a relief, but it's handy for them to be able to have one that they go, okay, let's make this one or board this one out, whatever order they do things in. Then we can just slot it in whenever if we need to buff one out or fill a gap because the schedule changed on us or something. Mm -hmm. There's a few in this little sort of first part of season 1B that has a lot of sort of episodes that could kind of belong anywhere. But we're about to come up on a few that are really significant episodes. So they have to go in a certain order. So we're just not there yet. <laughs> I suppose also um, then the movable episodes means you can pace out the important ones a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder what it was about this one that they decided it should be where it is. The way they describe this one is, let me find it. Stephen gets caught up in Ronaldo's paranormal theories about the strange occurrences in Beach City. So yeah, that's fair. I think that's fine. Yeah, that's plenty. That's we already knew that from the title <laughs> that it would be Ronaldo. And let's see, we talked about the bulletin board. I know that I mentioned the one about so many birthdays. How there was a picture of old Stephen on there, or a reference to him. 
but he also had some newspaper clippings about the ocean disappearing and the strange creature that was near the movie theater. So along with all the typical conspiracy things. Brand spanking new mint in box. So I'm out of stuff except for merch. Show me some merch. Okay. There's a Keep Beach City Weird book. Ah, there we go. And it has the anime face. <laughs> yes, it does. So this book is called Keep Beach City Weird. It is a little paperback that says you can't hide the truth. <laughs> and inside there are a lot of things in it that are spoilery, but some of them are not. There's a big wrestling thing. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, but this is sort of, it's basically a canon book because it's written by Matt Burnett and Ben Levin, who write for the show. So I believe one or both of them probably write the blog too. But he, Ronaldo, writes this book, you know, and just, it, it's mostly just references to stuff that's happened. But what's really hilarious about it is he talks about how he tried to get the book published traditionally and he couldn't, so he had to self-publish it. And that is on his father's dime. And as a thank you to his father, he is obligated to put advertisements for the fry shop <laughs> in it. So it's like full of advertisements for the fry shop. <laughs> like along the bottom, there's all these awkward ads. Each city walk fries. We promise never to bring out that fry bow costume again. <laughs> To be fair, that's probably a good selling point. Indeed. He's got, let's see, he's got a theory about the centipedal, that it may have been a radioactive centipede that bit a human or a radioactive human that bit a centipede. <laughs> <laughs> got an illustration and everything. He's got theories about the mega puffer fish, the squeam, screaming worm. Oh, that's one that I didn't mention from the blog. He had had one about trying to listen in his bathroom for ghosts because, of course, his bathroom is haunted. And he was listening for ghosts and he heard the worm scream and he had to go to the hospital <laughs> because it hurt his ears. That's terrible. Let's see. He has a zombie apocalypse flowchart in here. And let's see. Anything else funny in here? Wow. I'm just glancing through it to see. <laughs> There's an ad on here. Beach City Walk Fries. Only Steven gets the bits. Stop asking. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. There's an interview with Steven Universe in here, but it's spoilery, so I can't tell you about it. Huh. Crop circles. Local weirdness. Beach City Walk Fries. We welcome loiterers. <laughs> Beach City Walk Fries. Come out back and watch me slice up potatoes with my sick new katana. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a picture of the cat fingers in the book. Oh, cat finger fever. Yes. Hmm. He was worried it was contagious. Hmm. Well, hmm. There's some stuff about conspiracy theories involving Cookie Cat in here. And Frybo. And the lion. <sighs> see. Ah, he has a whole page about onion. Ah. This kid is weird. Like, next level weird. <laughs> I'm weird. Swamp children are weirder. Earlobes are super weird, but onion is just, I don't even know. <laughs> well, I agree with you on something, Ronaldo. Indeed. Peach City Walk Fries bring in definitive proof of Bigfoot's existence and get a free soda. <laughs> hmm. This is great. There's more about onion here. It says, once onion came to the fry shop and kept gesturing for me to give him ketchup packets. I gave him like 50 packets and then asked him if he wanted fries. He just shook his head, handed me a photograph of myself from third grade and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's perfect onion. Yeah. I love that onion is part of his weirdness. Yeah. So that's about that. Hmm. It's raining guys. The day the ocean disappeared. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. And the ending says, weird log the end, question mark. And the word question mark is spelled out. <laughs> he has a place for if you want to put your own face in the book. So he encourages you to keep your town weird. I'm also wearing a fan-made Keep Beach City Weird shirt. Ah, cool. Yeah, I saw, I saw a bit of it bobbing into shot. <laughs> yep. It just says, each city, keep it weird. Cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Uh, there is an official one, but I didn't buy it because I had already bought this okay. a long time ago. <laughs> it's a cool design. So we managed to talk about the Ronaldo episode for a long time. Yeah, Probably mostly yeah. me babbling about the, the blog because it is funny. <laughs> yeah, so, well, it had a lot of comedy hits more than I more than I originally expected. 
Yeah. But after this, we're on to 32, which is fusion cuisine. <laughs> so we can look forward to that. <laughs> Shall we say, say our farewells to our listeners? Yes, farewell, listeners. Yes, farewell, and keep your town weird. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye. You've been listening to Ivy and Daria on Not So Giant Women. You can find episodes of the show in video form by looking up Not So Giant Women on YouTube or in audio form at anchor.fm slash not so giant women or your podcatcher of choice. You can also find us on Facebook. Audio production by Daria. Video production and music by Ivy. Daria can also be heard on Postploitation, the Ozploitation podcast. And Ivy at her Steven Universe fan blog at love-takes-work.tumblr.com. Steven Universe was created by Rebecca Sugar and remains property of Cartoon Network. No infringement is intended.